Okay, it's about 9.03, and we'll uh, make it official and call our limited roll. Which means we have John DeWolf. Here. Richard Friesack. Here. DeAndrea's here. Bob Doan's here, because I saw him. Here. Al Regino's recovering. Ken Peterson. Here. Curtis Smith. Here. We did good. We have, um, I know we have one surveying item, which we can handle after we take care of our um, violations or um, investigations, as it were, if Janita is here. Is that, is that um, right? Uh, Janita will not be able to attend, and okay. Pam, Pam was not sure. And okay. the two that you have, as you can see, is uh, the special report was something uh, the board had requested at the last meeting just to see. Yeah, I think at the last meeting we just asked for, is there not a running account of of, of um, investigations? It's always right. a little, it's hard for me to understand when they're open or not open or closed or finished or whatever, but, you know, there were one, two, three, four, five, six, what about seven items that are pending as it appears. But on the action, you know, on the list, for example, the first one, Archimon, it says closed. Then that's just an update for us that has been um, dealt with. So over the last, and it's done. the last period of time, um, we have six, six that are closed, were recently closed. And then when I print it, it's so small, I can hardly read it. But anyway, open, current, closed, current, you know, <laughs> insufficient evidence on um, whatever this was, um, Ahmed. And then another one, Shah, no action, no violation, no evidence. Okay, so. Tony, what list are you referring to? There, was a, there were three sheets sent um, in our agenda. The first one was just a regular bi-monthly update. It had one item on it. And it was about a, a matter that involved a um, Gizik or Gezik, G-E-S-I-C-K. It's now in court. So that's on page, it's our um, item C or G, uh, whatever it is. G1. G1, G1. G1. I'm having trouble finding this stuff too. Oh, D1. Oh, it's on the... It's on the the last pages of the um, regular agenda of our yeah. agenda. Sorry, the I PDF promise. the PDF that Barbara sent agenda with attachments. Oh, last three pages. Okay. Horizontal. Yeah, yeah. I, I, yeah, I just rotated them on mine. I can't read it anyway, so <laughs> it, it, it's it, it's just the last month or the last meeting I had asked. Is there not a running count? Is there are there other applications in progress? And there was a somewhat of a reluctant answer, but the, it, it turns out that there have been, like the way I read it, six um, recent. No, there are eight that she summarized on the G two, which shows how they were adjudicated and and closed. So there's only one current engineering or surveying item that would concern us that's in um, in progress. And the resolution of this one regarding a, uh, what is it? No, it's a land surveyor. And it's a civil matter, dispute of facts, and it's right now in court. So that's it. So it's just a matter of curiosity as to how many, I know Kurt has always asked how many yeah. there are and where they are and what's the status and why does it take so long? But in reality, we only have one ending. <laughs> you right. Agree? No, I'm, I'm glad to see this. Yeah. Yeah. Okay. <laughs> so that was in response to our request for, for updating on that. And, and that was our, uh, well, that's our update on, on um, complaints or investigations. Okay. Good. So that's item. Those are the two I, um, items under G1 and G2 um, at the end of the agenda. So unless there's any other discussion, I guess we can move on. Barbara, I, yes. I would like to add a comment. Could they put these in a form that we could look at on Zoom? I would have to print this out on bigger paper. Right. Have. If you print it out on a normal eight and a half by 11, it's hard to read. 
Can they yeah. put a form that works with Zoom that works on the computer? So yeah, I'll look into that. Yep, definitely. No problem. And if you don't mind, I'll move over to the beginning of the agenda and take on the correspondence. There were four items. The first one is from Skip Harlecord. I know I know him from going to the annual meetings when we used to meet in person. He's from the Maryland board. He's been around for a long time. He's applied for and ran for numerous offices. And, and um, he's a very nice guy and I feel for him. So he keeps putting out his name that he wants to be in the uh, in the running for the president elect now. So that's just for information purposes. Mm -hmm. The uh, there's another one similarly um, from Tom Orisich. He also is seeking nomination from the national um, board for election. So again, just for information, you can read it and, and uh, take it for what it's worth. But those elections come up at the annual meeting. I tried to attend a couple of the meetings for Zoom on um, like the Northeast Zone and there was a board president's assembly. Um, I gotta tell you, I wasn't an active participant. It's a very tedious process of having that many people involved in voting. So you will, if you looked at the, re <laughs> at the uh, voting record, you won't see DeAndrea or Connecticut represented very well. But the votes um, for those types of meetings don't have much, um, what can I say? They don't have much, uh, much that would affect us directly. Well, thank, thank you, though, Tony, for, for doing that. We appreciate you at least. I, try, I sign up for them, and then I, I um, participate to the best of my ability for mm -hmm. at least the introductory session. But as it drags on to make a vote, it takes you 20 minutes. I don't think it's worth my time or our time. I understand. So anyway, that's that. Yeah, we appreciate it. And then uh, Mr. Tim Miller from the office of um, NCWS, he has um, some updates on the examinations. Um, we're obviously eliminating pencil and paper. So they're pointing out that um, this coming October, I think it is, Barbara, right? If I underlined it correctly, we're missed. It. It'll be the last pencil and paper yeah. exam for most of them. Mm -hmm. um, a couple of guys in my office were trying to um, take a, an LSIT, for example, and uh, it's very, very difficult to get an appointment. Um, one of my guys was taking his EIT, and he has to go to Albany. Oh. He, found, he found an open slot in, in Albany, but nothing in Connecticut or close by in New York. So it's an interesting thing. I don't know what they're going to do. Hopefully, now that Connecticut is open, um, as of May 1st, right, the governor said, now we can do everything. And if that's the case, then I would suspect that the CBT stations would reduce uh, or eliminate their restrictions. So it's too early to tell or hear, I guess, Barbara, but that would be good news for these guys. Yeah. Would you interpret that? The that I saw is that when they eliminated the, the paper, it took them about a year and a half before it instated like the civil um, testing, um, and, and it seems like, you know, that's a long time for somebody to wait to take a test. Right. But if you, if you read this, 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 um, thing from Lee Strickland, they're just pointing out that the October exams, you know, will be last paper and pencil for all these exams. Yep. And I say, I'm only Except mentioning it again, because it, it's, uh, we still have the problem of getting, places for the, um, the individuals to take the exams. Mm -hmm. They say now that if the CBT um, locations are no, no longer under restrictions, I guess that would increase the opportunities for the applicants. But regardless, October is the last time for pencil and paper. Okay. And that's what the notice is all about. So let's see if we cover them all. We had Tim Miller, um, Lee Strickland, that's really for, for Barbara dates of when the applications are being delivered, when they got to be returned, what you expect, and, and the changes in, in the different exams. So I guess that's more on the individual applicant than it is on Barbara or us at this point. All right. And then we have in our, in our um, 
agenda summary. I'm just trying to go through the items that affect Kurt. Um, and uh, let's see what else we got. Kurt and Ken. And um, that's it. We have a list of those who passed the uh, principles and practice using CBT. I think based on what I was just talking about, we only had six over there. And then we had, um, what do we have? Six, seven, seven applicants for the uh, principles and practice. Um, and then the next page, next page, you got one surveyor. Yeah, and then one, we had one yeah. surveying item, right? Yeah. Only, only one surveyor passed. Out of how many? How many, Barbara? 15 or so? <laughs> Yeah, but that, again, with the surveyors, um, the surveyors also have the CBT. They have to wait for the Connecticut two hour. And I noticed we didn't have a, the Connecticut two hour until July. Mm -hmm. um, so she is able to administer the Connecticut two hour land survey exam on April 30th. So uh, we do have a few applications, but that's why the surveyors, it isn't, it's, it's on the same wavelength like the PEs. Um, they're not all taking it at the same time like they used to. They're all taking it at different times. So um, this individual, individual took the Connecticut two hour when it was offered, um, and then he was able to sit for the, uh, the CBT version um, as soon as it was available to him. So again, the, the lists aren't gonna be as long as they used to be because they're all taking them at different times. And so, um, yeah, we're, we're not gonna see them all in one month. We're gonna see them one a month every, every month. <laughs> If everything, goes, if everything goes well, we'll see them one at a time. But they're Correct. related to when the, it's going to be related to when the two-hour exam is available, right? In, in some senses, yeah. Some some have already taken the kinetic two two hour, and we're waiting for a slot to sit for the for the Connecticut. I mean, for the CBT portion. Um, so you know they have to make sure they they've taken both parts, um, and they have to work two different testing serves. Well, one with NCS and one with PSI. And that's who, who's doing the Connecticut two hour for us at this point. Um, and what I'm trying to do is just do individuals um, from month to month. Um, I'll do a, a group of them in a four week span um, before I, I list them on the, you know, on the agenda. Well, how, okay. how is, I don't know, <laughs> I should know, but I don't. How, how is the, the Connecticut exam being administered then? When it, how is that? Is that is that on um, online? Is that computer based? Yes, um, through PS, uh, the Connecticut Two Hour Land Surveyor. Yeah. Is that what you're asking? Yes. Yes. Yeah. Yeah. The Connecticut Two Hour is 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 computer based, and they do have to go to one of the testing sites, but it's only offered one time or one date. Uh, because it's it's not like all the other exams that you can pick. Oh, okay. Well, um, I guess that's what I was trying so to get. Percent. I was trying to get that squared away. Yeah. So, in the past, or this, until until May first, you couldn't get several people in one testing site. A site. Right. Okay, so that should be better now for the applicants, and we should hopefully see more applicants at one testing session because it's only offered one day. Correct. Yeah. Okay. All right. Correct. I didn't understand that. Okay. Should we um, move then into the one surveying item that we have on our agenda, on our regular agenda, which is a uh, certificate of authorization for the corporate practice of land surveying submitted by G GGT Associates Inc. from Boston. And they have Susan Mattern as the um, appropriate land surveying member. We go, uh, motion for approval. I'll, Thank you, Kurt. I'll, I'll second that motion. So any discussion? All those in favor say aye. 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 Any opposed? Hearing on that motion carries. And then gentlemen, we also had our minutes from last February 9th. We had, uh, Tony, we had four class eights also. We do? We're, I, I six. And, and, a, and a class six. And a class okay. six on the I'm supplemental. Sorry, I missed that. Page six for there the I got class it. I got eight. it. I'm sorry. I missed it. Okay. 
Hagenbrod leading Ham O'Neill and Winus for class eight exam. Uh, Tony, I've reviewed the applicants and uh, recommend approval for all four. Thank you, uh, I second, I, I've read them also carefully and uh, I, I second that motion. All right, thank you very much. Any, any uh, further discussion on those four applicants? All those in favor of the motion to say aye. 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 Any opposed? Hearing none, I guess that motion carries. And then we do have our minutes from February 9th. Wait, there's uh, one yeah. on supplemental. Class six. Uh, <laughs> class six, uh, Bogwell. Here. Here you are. You're right. You know, as Barbara pointed out, she promised she was only going to send one more thing, and then it was one more thing. And as I was trying to assemble them, all, sometimes I didn't read them all the way through. I was trying to catch up. You're right, though. We have um, one, Mr. Bodwell, permit class six and credit part one. Mo motion for approval of uh, Bodwell under class six, credit part one. Thank you, Curtis. Oh, I'll second that motion. Thank you, Ken. All right. Um, all those in favor, say aye. 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 Any opposed? Hearing none, that motion carries. Now, did I miss any others? <laughs> no, just the minutes. No. <laughs> all right, let's go to the minutes now. <laughs> we'll, we'll take a minute for the minutes. And this one I had to print this morning, but I didn't see anything quickly um, when I reviewed it. But does anybody have any comments or observations on? If you can just look at my um, A1, if I describe that, um, about the installation of uh, the sprinkler. Was that all right? Or should I, or should that be fixed? No, I, I agree. I think that if the okay. engineer sets the specifications, the technician prepares the layout, and the engineer has to approve the shop drawings. I just didn't know if I worded it the way it was all right. That's all. Yes, I, I, I agree with that. Yes. Okay. You know, in the, in the I guess in the in the practice of the of the uh, industry, the technician is going to be the, the boots on the ground, and he's going to say that's the layout that was approved by the engineer. The engineer is ultimately responsible, so he has to sign the completed installation. I don't think we can deny that in any way. Ultimately, the licensee is responsible. And therefore, that's his signature that has to be on the plan. We do, any disagreement with that, Bob, John? No. I agree. Richard, it's all the same. Right. Okay. So if, it, if that's okay in the, in the way it was written, I, I say it's fine. And the list of um, everybody that's passed is complete. Is there a motion to accept the, the minutes? So moved. Accepted? Thank you, Robert. Second. Thank you. Richard. All those in favor of the motion to accept the minutes from February 9th as written, say aye. 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 Any opposed? Hearing none, that motion carries. And that would complete our correspondence, our minutes, and our surveying items, which I think we may move on to our regular agenda. And Curtis and Ken, if you're not so inclined to, to watch this um, process, we thank you for your service. And see you. <laughs> when is our next meeting, Barbara? Yep. Um, June. 10th, I think, or June 15th. <laughs> I'm losing it. <laughs> I'll be on <laughs> okay. June 15th. 15th okay. is a Tuesday. That's the day. At June 15th. There you go. All right. Okay. All right, Tony. Barbara. Right, thank you very much. Bye. Bob. Take care. Good to see you. Bye. 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 In a couple of months. <laughs> All right. Take care. All right. Let's move to um, page four of our regular agenda for class one exam, credit part one. John DeWolf reviewed NS and Hogan. <clears throat> okay. I move approval of both. 
Second. Thank you, Ken. Now, Richard. Sure. Um, any discussion? All those in favor say aye. 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 Any opposed? Hearing none, that motion carries. Uh, Bob Dome reviewed Ferris with the fundamentals from New York. Okay, I, um, I would like to see an evaluation of um, his uh, degree. Um, it's, um, it's from um, uh, New Brunswick, uh, University of Regina. And um, it's called a Bachelor of Applied Science. And the major is environmental systems engineering and a minor in petroleum engineering. And that's, okay. that's the only information I have. Okay. All right. So tables. Right? So I make that, or we can table, I make a motion to table it and receive an evaluation. Second. Thank you, Darren. All those in favor of the motion to table the review of Hassan Ferris uh, pending a receipt of a evaluation for the foreign degree. All those in favor say aye. 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 Any opposed? Hearing on that motion carries. That's tabled for now. Okay. <clears throat> that moves on to the next group of class four uh, licensees, the, uh, the applicants for reciprocity. I reviewed them all, Alan through Yamansky. There were three applicants that had very good evaluations. Um, one interesting we was um, a structural engineer with a master's from Stanford, but the undergraduate was, uh, was evaluated. Anyway, they were all three very, um, very, very good evaluations. I just wanted to note another one, um, one Bridget Kudihi from uh, Idaho with a master's in electrical engineering. Um, I had never really seen straight A's, I mean, straight A's in all of her master's courses. So that was just a, an interesting thing to note. I also wanted to note that out of the 25 on this page, there were 10 structurals um, engineers and um, only four non-model law, which, I, which was a, I don't know, an indication of a trend that there are so many masters now, they're following the model, model law on the path to licensure, which is what the national has tried to impose, you know, BS plus 30, meaning the uh, masters. So regardless of all that background, uh, my recommendation is to approve all the applicants from Allen through Yamansky on page four for class four reciprocity. And if there's a motion, to accept my recommendation. So moved. Thank you, Richard. Is there a second? second? I'll second. Thank you, Bob. John. John. All those in favor of the motion to approve, Alan through Yamansky, say aye. 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 Any opposed? Hearing none, that motion carries. Um, Rob Lewandowski took the next group of applicants from AUKIT on page four through Yarley. Let's see if I got that right. Um, through Yarley Connect on page five. Rob did a very thorough review. He did a meeting that he could not get out of today. So he found them um, to be all in order. He too was impressed with the number of masters that came through in the model uh, model law. He has a model law actually on every one of the applicants. Oh, Not all of them had the masters. Um, but reading over his chart, they were all uh, model law engineers. So is there a motion to accept his recommendation for approval of all 25 applicants from AUKIT through yart -T? I will move it. I'll move approval. Thank you, John. Second. Thank you, Robert. All those in favor, say aye. 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 Any opposed? Hearing on that motion carries. Which then brings us to the next group that John DeWolf reviewed on page five, which is um, 
Walter through Clegg on page five for class four reciprocity. I didn't do Clegg, that's sweet. Oh, I'm sorry, that got slid over to Richard. I mean, yeah, yeah. okay, absolutely right. So through um, Walter through Z Zedinek. I wanted to hear you say it. <laughs> that's the best I could do. You did well. Um, there are four of them with foreign degrees. They've been evaluated. Two of them have a master's from the US, but the evaluation comes up a couple hours short of general ed on two of them. Two of them are perfect. So with that in mind, um, they're all acceptable. I do wanna note that with um, Schultheis, he wrote a letter when he, and he had a problem renewing his license. He has multiple license. He said when he renewed it in Florida, he mistakenly attested to taking a one hour course specific to Florida engineering laws and rules. He lost the, uh, he lost the audio. You can't hear me? Can you hear me? I can. I can. I can. You. you can? Yes. Yeah, I can hear you. Okay. Got you now. Okay, I'll get closer. I didn't realize there was a problem. Anyway, he had a, he put on, apparently he took a Florida course. He did not, it did get sorted out. And he had to take a, the course and a three hours ethics exam, but every, he's okay otherwise. So I move the entire group from Alter to Zined, Nick. Second. Thank you, Robert. <clears throat> Any further discussion? All those in favor say aye. 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 Any opposed? Hearing on that motion carries. <clears throat> Richard reviewed the next group from Clegg on page five, <clears throat> excuse me, through Juan on page six for class four reciprocity. Okay, I, I just have um, two items in terms of Nina Ezi Nikai. Um, his non-model law, he got his degree out of Egypt and he was 11 hours short in his humanities and, and social sciences. But I think that that gets covered in their undergraduate or their preparations for college so that they don't necessarily, you know, I guess devote a lot of time for humanities and social sciences. But one thing I did notice from him is he did get his um, fundamentals of engineering from New York. But when, when you look at the New York um, review, they, they only indicate that, the, that, that they, he didn't take a test there. Let me, go, let me see if I can't find it really quick. What was that name, um, Richard? It's the Mina Aziz Mackay. Mina Mikhail, that one? Yes. Okay. Is that an issue of verification, Barbara? That he took the exam, but they didn't verify? Um, Just as the program was acceptable in accordance with the New York State regulations of the Commissioner of Education requirements met at the time of licensure. And it, it just says basis of licensure, except NCWS record dated in lieu of exams. And I'm not sure what that means. Does that mean he took it some other jurisdiction? In other words, he didn't take it in New York. Right, but 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 that but they're saying he took it in New York, and 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 they're saying no, he didn't. <laughs> you know, so I'm just sort of saying, well, where did he take it? I will. Um, I'll double check that because I see what I mean, you're saying. I see what you said. Uh, I see what you're saying there, Richard. I see it. Okay. So we'll take out Mikhail, Mina Mikhail. We'll take out and table that for pending verification of the um, both exams. Correct. Correct. Is that the motion? Yeah. Yes. There's a second to Richard's motion to table Mina Mikhail pending verification of the fundamentals exam. 
Second. 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 Thanks, Bob. And and then I just need a verification that um, Pro Canic Richard Nicholas. Um, he went, when I looked at his fundamentals of engineering, they said that he took a test that was only six hours long, and I'm over there. Yeah, I that's guess. CBT. That's CBT now. I've seen lots of six hours. It's oh, just, really? It's because they don't have the sit down exam anymore. Oh, right. As of 2014, that changed basically to a six hour. A computer-based test, so that's that changed after right. 2014 well, when it became. And I, don't, I guess I don't yep. have a problem, you know, with that. And I, I just okay. seen so many eight hours that a six hours sort of just threw me off. I guess. Um, yeah, after 2014, it became six. <clears throat> All right. So um, I, I believe the, the that other motion. So the motion is to table Mina McHale. We have to do that one first. It's been seconded. Right. By Bob Doan. Is there any further discussion? If not, all those in favor of the motion to table Mina McHale pending verification of the fundamentals. All those in favor say aye. 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 Any opposed? All right, hearing none, that motion carries. So that leaves us to the remainder, Richard. The remainder were at least equivalent to the model law and um, had degrees and all had experience and. Passing yep. past our litmus test, so I'll make a motion that we approve the remainder. So, is there a second to that motion? Second. Thank you, Robert. All those in favor of the motion to approve Clegg and Colot through Yawn on page five and six for class four reciprocity, with the exception of Mina McHale. All those in favor say aye. 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 Any opposed? Hearing on that motion carries. So Bob Doan, you reviewed Andrew Ballantyne through Robert Winans for class four reciprocity on page six. Okay. <laughs> Out of the 15, three of them were model law. And I'll just run through the issues. <laughs> um, and um, for uh, uh, Teo Geo, he has a um, associate in construction engineering uh, from China and a bachelor's in construction management and a master's in project management. I need an evaluation of the association in construction engineering and supervision. I think that's the only, um, I don't, I don't know. I don't consider construction management an engineering degree. Is that correct? I would agree. There's no design work whatsoever. Um, so I, um, for Teo Geo, I would like to uh, make a motion that we get his foreign degree evaluated. I'll second that. Thank you, Richard. Any further discussion? All those in favor of the motion to require evaluation for Teo Gale, say aye. 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 Any opposed? I was under the impression that all foreign degrees have to be evaluated before we... We've been doing that, I think. Yeah, and, and I have, I have a, a student transcript card and it's stamped by NCEES, it's official document, but there are no conclusions and I can't make uh, sense of the transcript card. It doesn't, uh, it doesn't make uh, sense in going through it. You can't even determine what courses they are. If we don't have the evaluation we needed, so yep. that's, that's good. Okay. Were there any others in that regard you said? Yeah, um, Andrew Jarvis has submitted a verification of education from um, West Virginia Institute of Technology and it is not signed or stamped. Can we, um, I'll make a motion to a, a, approve him 
with a signed and stamped um, verification of education. There's a second to that motion? Second. Thank you, Richard. So the motion is to require request a verification of education. Is that what it was? That's correct. Uh, the the record of grad, it's uh, on the same sheet, verification of education and record of graduation. Um, there's no signature by the registrar, nor is there a uh, school seal affixed. Can I ask a question? Is yep. there the normal one page summary from NCEES? Uh, no, he's, not, he's a non uh, model law. Okay, because if you have that one page summary, they will indicate that. Right. right, they would indicate it. He didn't go through that, um, John. See, if, if I have that one page, I never look at the verification. Right, if, if I had that page, but okay. he, did, he did not go through that process. That makes sense. Thank you, Bob. Okay. Well, there's a motion moved and seconded to approve Andrew Jarvis subject to satisfactory receipt of the verification of education. In other words, something official to prove that he graduated. Yeah, that's okay. correct. That's all, all I need. the motion, say aye. 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 Any opposed? Hearing on that motion carries. Okay, um, moving on down to <laughs> Ion Painate. Panate. He's a non model law engineer and he had an evaluation um, and it, it fell short on um, uh, humanities and general science, but it also fell short on uh, engineering uh, design courses. Oh, dear. Yeah, and and I was Mr. Um, excuse me, Bob. Um, and just so you know, I think Mr. Um, today, uh, the one that you're talking about. Yes, he's in he's in attendance, so I don't know if he's going to end up asking the question. Just so you know. Okay, that's fine. He's he's, uh, he's listening on the meeting, just in case he has a question to ask. Just so you okay. know. Okay, uh, that 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 would be great. Um, and Barbara, said, Barbara, you 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 didn't come clearly through on my computer. I'm sorry. Um, I was just saying that uh, Mr. Uh, the, the applicant that uh, Bob is going over, he's he's attending the meeting right now. So if in case there was any um, questions, maybe he wanted to ask, uh, just so you know that he was most likely available um, to answer any questions. Okay. Did you hear me? Uh, John, I'm sorry, I don't know if I'm going in and out. Okay. okay. Bob, if you don't mind, reiterate your your um your concern there is that okay. I I, I was know. just I was just going through the um, ECEI evaluation, and there's some uh, shortage in the um, um, humanities and general science, but there was also a shortage in um, engineering design courses. And I would be concerned about that, John, except in the engineering um, topics and the engineering sciences, he has 105 um, total semester hours. And where typically, you know, 45 or 48 is the um, recommended. And, um, and so, in the design, um, he has uh, two um, uh, semester hours, um, but I am inclined since he has so much engineering courses or so many engineering courses to um, approve him. Sounds reasonable. Okay, so I'll, um, so with that said, um, uh, so the evaluation, Bob, in summary, the evaluation is very good in the engineering aspects of the, of the course study, just yes. in humanities. Yeah. So the motion I, would be. Well, I'll, I'll, I'll include them in the, um, 
in the remaining group. There were there were a few that were not um, model law because of uh, disciplinary action, um, but um, I will uh, make a motion to approve um, the remaining for class four um, reciprocity. All right, is there a second? Second. Thank you, Richard. So there's a motion to approve all the applicants on our agenda page six from Valentine through Waynans with the exception of Gayo and Jarvis at this point, subject to other aspects of evaluation. All those in favor of the motion to approve, say aye. 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 Any opposed? Hearing on that motion carries. Okay, thanks guys. Thank you, Rob. Because what I'd like to do is just make a little comment in terms of, you know, my review this past month, I ran across an applicant who had, you know, his bachelor's, his master's, and his PhD. And he got his initial bachelor's degree in 2006. And, you know, when I was looking at his record, I noticed that he only had, you know, five and a half years of experience even though he, he got his initial degree in 2006 and in 14 years, he only got five years of experience. And then when I started looking at his, you know, credentials in terms of, you know, he, he took his, he, he passed his fundamentals, you know, in, in 2007, I believe. And then he, and again, he had a PhD <laughs> and, and he, he took his, you know, um, principles of engineering, but he failed it five times before he passed it. Wow. So he, he had to take his principles of engineering six times in order to, to pass it. And he had a PhD. So I, I, I guess I just wanted to sort of point out the fact that, you know, sometimes a degree doesn't necessarily equate to having a, a good knowledge of, of engineering or understanding the engineering process that we're, we're trying to, to, you know, uphold. So, um, Again, you know, just just as an, an observation that you know sometimes you know we, we shouldn't just get ca caught up on the fact that if somebody has a, a, a higher yeah, degree that they're going to be you I, know I think very that's, stupid. That's a very good point to make in, in light of the of the uh, trend that our national group is trying to push, which is to say take both parts anytime you want, but the reality of it is the experience is necessary. Yeah. To put it in perspective. You know, make a practical assessment of what you study. I always re re recall the time when I was a very young guy and they put me on an inspection site. We were doing a jacking under a railroad tunnel of a 72 inch pipe and the, um, <laughs> the jacking pit was um, sheet piling and the, um, the PhD, <laughs> Ahmad Zenderu came out and asked me what was all this sheathing? They said, well, that's the jacking pit you designed. You know, it was just a, it was a revelation at the time saying, boy, you got to do more than just study. Anyway, I, it goes along with your uh, anecdote that uh, I think the, the, you know, practical experience is very important be before you take the final exam. Well, many PhDs are just science-based, especially in environmental end, and you don't really get the knowledge. That's why the four-year engineering degree is so critical, I believe. Good. You get breadth and you get design experience. Right. All good. So let's keep going the way we have been and, and um, stay with our policy, and I think that's the right way to do it. So now we move on our, on our regular agenda on page seven. We have the class nine licensees, which is a good group of individuals from a variety of universities. So is there a motion to approve the class nine licenses for Andrews through Zal on page seven? So move. Thank you, John. Second. Thank you, Robert. Any discussion? All those in favor say aye. 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 Any opposed? Carrying on that motion carries. Then we had some applications for the corporate practice of professional engineering that Richard Swizak reviewed, which include KFI Engineers PC, Mass Crane and Hoist Service Inc., Power Grid Services LLC, 
and the Smart Structural Solutions LLC. <laughs> um, I, I'll, I'll begin with looking at the Power Grid Services LLC. In okay. terms of you know being an LLC, all, you know all the owners have to be a licensed engineer. And I, I believe there were there were three owners. There's you know I guess a, a Michael Wright, a Christopher Campbell, and a James Cialdia. And you know they own somewhere around thirty three percent each. But you know the, the 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 first two engineers, Mr. Wright and Mr. Campbell, are professional engineers in the state of Connecticut. But they didn't indicate whether Mr. Um, Cialdia was a professional engineer in a state that they resided in. So that, you know, I, I know that two of the three are professional engineers, but all three of them would have to be a professional engineers in order to be in an LLC in the state of Connecticut. Correct. Two thirds, two thirds. Two thirds have to be licensed, uh, have ownership in Connecticut. Yeah. On LLCs and PCs. That but LLC what? changed two, a couple years ago. But, all the LLC, but don't all the LLCs have to be licensed? Yeah, all the LLCs have to be licensed, but they don't necessarily, the only one of them have to be licensed in the state of Connecticut, but they all have to be licensed in order to be an LLC. Because I'm, I'm looking at, at footnote number was, four in our form. I thought it went to two thirds of them had to be licensed. Yeah, two thirds. Two, two thirds of the ownership. That's what changed. That, that, that was the big discussion when we had it that before we did ask for 100% ownership by licensed uh, engineers and it couldn't be in any jurisdiction. And then when that uh, public act changed, it changed it that it had to be two thirds, just two thirds ownership by Connecticut licensees. Or and by the li other third, go ahead Bob. The other third doesn't even have to be licensed. Correct. Oh really? Yeah. Yeah, that's what changed right. a few years ago. All right, so I'm, I'm looking at my aided form. I will do Yeah, the that. form, I don't think the form caught up to the um, to staff. The regulations? The act, yeah. Yeah. Okay, so clarification, two thirds, right. of the two thirds of the ownership must be Connecticut licensees. All right, Correct. If, Correct. if that's the case, I'll, I, I guess they, being registered professional engineers and you know so in that sense um i'll make a motion that we accept all four of them okay second okay i'm sorry uh, who, who seconded i did john thank you john thank you so it's been moving a second to approve kfi engineers bc mass crane and hoist service inc Power Grid Services LLC and Smart Structural Solutions LLC. All those in favor of the motion to approve, all four say aye. 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 Any opposed? Hearing on that motion carried. Bob Dome reviewed ABS Engineering PLLC and, and uh, Campos EPC Engineering East PLLC for the corporate practice of engineering. And uh, yeah, I got a bunch on the other page too. But Right. We'll just take, I'll, take it easy on me today. Number eight, we'll, page, we'll do page eight, which is ABS and Campos. Okay, I'll, I'll make a motion to um, approve both uh, ABS Engineering and Campos EPC Engineering. Two second. Second. Thank you, John. Any discussion? All those in favor say aye. 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 Any opposed? And the difference one more time between PLLC and LLC is? Pro professional uh, Limited Liability Company. It's really no different, no different than LLC. as far as requirements. All right. Now, Bob, you continued on page nine with another group of, of um, applicants for corporate practice, which is DeSimone Cult Consulting Engineers, DPC, <laughs> East West Engineering, PLLC, 
M and J Engineering Inc., OTO Connecticut LLC, Scott McKinley Engineers LLC, and Symbiont Science Engineering and Construction Inc. Hey, um, Barbara, I have uh, one question on the uh, Symbiont uh, Science. Uh, Jennifer Dressler, um, she had a pending license. Was that approved? It was approved, yes. She's all set. She is all set, okay. Yeah, she was approved um, at the last meeting, actually. Okay. And um, under the uh, DPC, uh, Design Professional Corporation, um, the legal requirement of that is that a design professional needs to own 75% of the um, corporation. And in this case, um, he owns 79%. Uh, so the DPC uh, meets the uh, legal and the state uh, requirements. Um, but in any event, long story short, I'll make a motion to approve uh, DC, D. Simone Consulting through Symbiont Science, Engineering, and Construction. Thank you, Bob. Is there a second? Second. Thank, second. You. Thank you, John. Any further discussion? All those in favor say aye. 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 Any opposed? Hearing on that motion carries. Which leads us to page 10 of our regular agenda and the issue of reinstatements for Bertolo, uh, reviewed by Richard Swizak. He was continuously licensed in another state and has not signed or sealed any documents since the lapse in 09. Sir Richard, you have a motion. I, I did take a look at his application, and you know, it seems to be, you know, I, I guess up to date. And, and modified, and he did have a statement that he did not sign and seal anything. And, and he, I guess he is out of New Jersey and is working out in New Jersey since, you know, his lapse. So I'll make a motion that we accept his reinstatement. So a second. Second. Thank you, John. Any further discussion? All those in favor say aye. 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 Any opposed? Hearing on that motion carries. Bob Doan reviewed Harold and Randall. Similar situation dating back to 2010 for Arrow and 2012 for Randall. Um, they were continually, continuously licensed in another state. Is there a motion to approve? I, I make a motion to approve both uh, Harold and Randall. Is a second? Second. Thank you, Richard. Any further discussion? All those in favor say aye. 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 Any opposed? Carrying on that motion, Terry. When I, when I was reviewing um, my reciprocity, um, one guy was disciplined uh, because he let his um, license lapse in Pennsylvania and his license lapse in West Virginia. He got fined um, $2,500 for uh, Pennsylvania and one thousand dollars for West Virginia. Wow! For, for la lapse license. Wow! Was and he they, practicing in those states? Yeah, so. he did. And it was it was um, they had a change in personnel, and the person that took care of it was no longer employed, and um, so they missed it for. Uh, a couple of years, and they they had hearings and everything for them, and for the company, they made a big, um, a huge deal of it. And when we get, when I get one um, for a reinstatement, and they've done work, it really doesn't change the circumstances, because you want them to be licensed to take right. responsibility for the work. Right, I think that's the key issue is that you were recognizing that they had the ability, that they did the work that they're responsible for. I think that's that's the most important aspect of it. Yes, yep. Mm -hmm. You can't say later on that I, 
I wasn't licensed, so you have no control over me. That just doesn't make sense. No, no. Well, that's West Virginia and Pennsylvania. They yeah. got it done. But now we have um, a few more applications on the supplemental agenda. The first group, Avila, Doobie, Feltz, and Gorey for class four reciprocity reviewed by John DeWolf. I move approval. Second. Thank you, Richard. Any discussion? All those in favor say aye. 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 Any opposed? Hearing on that motion carries. I want uh, you to pronounce one. this one in, in full. Profound, pronounce their full name. Hakamaneshi. <laughs> 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 I'm going to go that way. Hakamaneshi. Manotre. Manotre. Oh, I'll, I'll stay with the Hakamaneshi. <laughs> True. Link. Yeah. Reviewed by uh, Richard Swizak. I'll, I'll make a motion that we approve all four of them. They, they, they were all model law. And thank you for such an easy second supplemental submission no because they, they went really quick. Thank you. That's what I was hoping for. <laughs> so, okay. I'll second it. Thank you, John. All those in favor of the motion to approve those four, say <laughs> aye. Aye. Uh, aye. Aye. Barbara, I have a question. Yes. How much work, how much more work is it to scan it and put it into the, so you can do it by email versus just copying these things and sending them in the mail? Depends on what's in the office. I will tell you this because I don't have time in my office to do this and a little more cramped at home. I appreciate the paper, especially when they come in with, and I know it's a waste of paper, but when they come in with 49 sheets, scanning in the office or at home or back and forth, I have a bigger, my personal preference is stay with the paper so I have a okay. continuity of the review. So many times I'm going back and forth to verify what was said later on and seeing what they do, you know, as professions and, you know, where's their um, um, expertise and concentration. I just think it's it's helpful to have the, for me to go back and forth quickly. It, it, it I've gotten better, I guess, at going back and forth on the computer, just sliding the thing up and down. But yeah. okay, I, I mean, paper's okay, but it's a lot of paper. It paper. is. Well, and especially the ones that I, when I do send it to you, I don't give you any of the personal references or right. I, I do, and that's sometimes why I may miss something. Um, but uh -huh. I mean, I can kind of, my only thing was, is I didn't know how much, I mean, I can kind of split it up, but for, I just don't know how much, how much I can email at a time. That was my only thing. How oh, that's you true. Can, you know, yeah. I guess paper's still the way to go. Okay. I mean, I, that's why with the supplemental, I'll, I'll do it by email. I don't mind doing some of it by email. To answer your first question, it's really not that bad. I um, guess. For, for example, yesterday, you know, we got three or four different printers and the, um, the supplementals came in. The first guy was 49 pages and I scanned it quickly and took what I wanted on that one. But then, you know, I ended up printing right. one, in the front, one in the back and I'm running around at the end of the day looking for where I had all my stuff. But I, I do appreciate that effort you put in. And I think that um, the paper for me right now is better. But anyway, so to that end, I looked at Hinjoza, Logan and Orzalak um, as four, uh, three applicants for our reciprocity class four. Um, they're all currently licensed. Um, only one model law engineer, um, but they had a broad scope of um, experience, I would say they're all um, appropriate to for um, reciprocity. So I recommend approval of all three in Joza, Logan, and Arcelac. Is there a motion to accept my recommendation? So move. Thank you. Thank you, John. Second. Robert. Thank you, Richard. All those in favor of the motion say aye. 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 Any opposed? Hearing on that motion carries. Just one more comment on what I said. I guess the solution eventually would be for the state to require things to be submitted online and then have password systems so that we could look at them online. Right. That would save an awful lot of money, both on copying and postage and 
It seems yeah, we, to me we should be, I mean, the university wouldn't do this stuff anymore with paper. And that's, uh, that goes back 10 years. Yeah. Okay. okay. I've made my comment. I will Appreciate be quiet. It. Hey. Well, it may, change, it may change in January if, if I'm under a different director because my director is retiring, I believe, in December. And if hopefully, if I'm under the director of licensed services, he can probably come up with more stuff. They're more, uh, he deals with a lot of this kind of stuff. So it's a possibility. Okay. Come down the then Bob, don't review our last two applicants for reciprocity, which was John Reese and Lauren Underwood. They were both um, model law and very quick reviews. Thank you, Barbara. And I make a motion to approve both. Thank you. Second. 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 Thank you, John. All those in favor of the motion to approve, Reese and Underwood say aye. 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 Opposed? Hearing none, that motion carries. And Bob Doan reviewed our last applicant for the day, which was Thomas Backman, continuously licensed in another state has not sealed any other documents since 2010. And, and John, I didn't print this one out because it was, it was over 70 pages long. <laughs> so, but I reviewed it online and uh, I'll make a motion to reinstate uh, Bachman. Second. Thank you, Richard. All those in favor of the motion to reinstate, say aye. 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 Any opposed? Bob, it's lucky that he didn't, um, that he was continuously licensed elsewhere because if he started to make a list of all the projects, we'd be here for another hour and a half. I think so. <laughs> yes, that's for all right. sure. All right, is there any other business that we have overlooked? I have a question. Okay. Um, when the state opens up again, are we still going to do our meetings by Zoom? Or are we going to be going to Hartford? I don't know yet. Okay. For me, the Zoom works. I know. Uh, I, it works for me too. There's no traffic coming up the stairs to my office. Well, I, <laughs> I agree. I, I get delayed a little bit at the coffee machine, but other than that, it's not bad. <laughs> right. <laughs> the only the only downside I can say to the Zoom meeting is um, that I had some freshly made chocolate chip cookies last night from my wife, and I was going to bring them to you, Barbara, but oh, I couldn't geez. send them through the screen. <laughs> <laughs> okay. <laughs> Maybe next year. All right. Yeah, I, I to answer your question, Bob, I don't know. Um, I mean, we still have the capability, so I, I'm sure a lot of people are still going to be able to do it. They, they are conducting hearings by Zoom as well right now. So who knows? Um, I don't know when, when they're actually gonna let people in. Um, and Tony, while I got you on the phone, I guess I guess today's the deadline day for a delegate. At, what's it, the Northeast Zone? Are you interested? I'll, I'll have to- Yeah, I, I filled out the form. I was gonna just fax it back myself, but um, I'll scan it to you, you can send it to them. All right, okay. I don't know how they're gonna handle that either. It's, it's been you know, all that Zoom stuff. So it'll, it'll, um, it'll happen. Yeah, I'll, I'll scan it to you in a few minutes and I'll, and you can send it to them. I don't know why okay. they want you to sign it. Why can't I sign it? But I, I don't get it. Because uh, yeah. I don't know how much more I can, you know, it's, it's not the right signature. And the other thing, just, 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 just to throw it out there. Um, every once in a while, they do this base camp that I, I told you about. I, I sometimes set things to you. Um, just to see what the discussion of other boards are. I guess there's this guy, I can't remember his name, but he's with NCS. And I guess he starts looking at everybody, all the states start having different um, proposals that are being raised. And I guess the one thing that they were looking at was uh, the universal licensing. I guess some some state was was putting that or trying to put that in their regulations. And looking at some of the information from the other state boards, um, this is just an F FYI. Um, even though they may approve it, they're still saying that the board would still look at the look at all their requirements to see if they still meet the same guidelines that their state is. So I I I don't understand where this universal licensing is is coming it, into. 
the, the thing that they've been trying to do as an as so as a you know a, a masthead, you know, an NCAAS is supposed to be encouraging um, reciprocity, make that process easier, right? So if right. you if you try to standardize it, that's the right thing to do. But we're the we're the ones that are different. You Connecticut is because we've been adamant in our policy and adamant maintaining our policy that you have to have the four year degree, you have to have the four years experience, right? And you have to take both exams. And right. I still go back to that meeting, you know, whatever it is, it's like five years ago now, and nothing changed the last time I went to a in-person meeting where there's still states that have a, a, an oral exam. There are people that uh, grant wa uh, states that grant waivers on the fundamentals. You know, yep. one state doesn't want to have anything to do with a technology degree. And yet our president elect is a graduate of a technology degree, you know, things like that. So you're not going to get that consistency. So you just want to right. put a name on it, call it a universal license, and you can go to New York or go to Connecticut or go to Massachusetts. Call it what you will, but it's not the same. And they can't get themselves to understand that the basics of the engineering degree and taking both exams is the is the basis. And they can't get that underway. But, so but if, they, if, if they want to adopt a, a universal license, we're members of NCWS, but we're not obligated to anything they do. We take advantage of their services and we rely on their research and their evaluation, but we're paying for it, right? Correct. Yeah. What if what if somebody meets the national model law, which is what we follow? They right. could be universally licensed. You know, that's, that whole, that, that's the point, John, that they that that model law is right now set up so that I don't know if it's this year or next year or whatever year it is. In order to be licensed, you have to have um, a math of a bachelor's plus 30 or master's, right? Those are the two new things, in my opinion. And you're supposed to have the four-year degree and you're supposed to have the experience. But the, the NASTO is pushing or leaning toward allowing anybody to take the exam at any time. That's another push that's coming through there, you know, along with this universal license. I hadn't heard the universal license in anything yet. And I read that newsletter yeah. that comes in. I, I hadn't seen that. And I'll look for it the next time. But you see, the, the national NCWS is, is um, undermining their own model law nice. by supporting or, can, or at least listening to the concept that you can take the exam at any time you want. It doesn't make sense. And as we discussed today with Richard and my anecdote, you know, there's, there's evidence of that. Good point. Mm -hmm. We'll see how it goes. I don't know, Barbara. I, 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 don't, I hadn't heard that. And maybe it'll come up at the Northeast Zone meeting, which I can attend because it's not as much voting and, and um, you know, I read something. I read something recently in one of the civil engineering or structural engineering stuff about this push for universal licensing. It seems to me if you just met the regular requirements that are in existence now that makes some sense and all the others would have to be looked at individually. Right. So we'll, we'll still be out there flying alone, you know, when it comes down to that. All right. Okay. Keep us posted on that then, Barbara. And, and, and Barbara, I was only kidding when I said that you can whip up that newsletter really quick. <laughs> oh, I know that. I know. It's the funniest thing, because Tony emailed me, he goes, please tell me he's kidding. And I go, yeah, he is kidding. <laughs> I was too funny. And I, you, you I, I just thought it would be something else yeah, that you could do in your, your spare time when you're not sleeping time. or something. <laughs> yeah, well, I'm doing the architect right now, as I said, because the guy is out for four weeks again. So. You know, I'm getting emails galore about reviewing architect applications, and I'm going, <laughs> and then I got Bob Dunn. I go, did you get my mail? And he goes, yeah, the, the, the suitcase of applications you sent me, that was good. <laughs> that was good, Bob. <laughs> Rich, if you get a whole bunch of messy things to review, you'll know why. I know, I know. Well, I'm glad I didn't get Bob's last, you know, thing where he had three model laws. I'm over there. Oh my God. I, yes. You know, you yeah. have you have to look at those with a fine-tooth comb so that yeah, they, they get does. a lot more intricate and for, for sure. That, that was before your comment. So <laughs> yeah, that was yeah, that was before. You know. um, 
All right. All right. It's all good, um, Barbara. I'll I'll make a motion. We adjourn. Okay. Thanks, guys. Thank you, everybody. Take care. Okay. Take care. Bye. Bye.